Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Watson. Let him move, Yankee. made that the Gatling gun is not my idea of fighting a war. Let's not advertise what we're carrying, Sergeant. Sorry. Got a spare one? Thanks. You ought to extend your leave a few days and watch him test the gun. The arsenal. Waste of time. Crazy man's dream. No gun will ever shoot 200 shots a minute. 250? And Dr. Gantling is far from crazy. No, I think the gun will work. Maybe change the whole pattern of future wars. This one, if the Rebs ever get their hands on it. All set? All set. And make it look real. Baggage car.
All clear, Captain. Right. cents a day. Johnny, pick a tune on your banjo. Listen to the wheels go clacking on the way. Tapioca, tapioca. That's a code song, all right. Give him this. If you please, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Faraday. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you what we're going to do. There is no one in this fine crowd here today. I say there is no one in this great sovereign state. In fact, folks, there is no one in this entire universe of ours who can face himself in the looking glass on any given morning and say, I'm as chock full of health as the good Lord intended me to be. I say there's no one, but that condition isn't necessary, folks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may continue to have your kind attention, I would like to introduce to you now my esteemed colleague from Boston, Massachusetts, Mr. Jim Faraday. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, what is it that we all crave? Not money, not the luxuries money will buy. It is health, the physical well-being of our bodies. Tapioca, tapioca. All she ever learned to cook was tapioca. For my dinner, for my supper, Tapioca I ate till I couldn't see straight Oh, working on the railroad, 20 cents a day Johnny, pick a tune on your banjo Listen to the wheels go clacking on the way Tapioca, 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 they seem to say Hello, ladies and gentlemen, step right up here Step right up, it's Dr. Dr. Sunderland's Magic Muscle Builder He's unarmed. Well, what is it? It's female and pretty. Well, here, let me see. Come on, let me look. Yeah. But it's Yankee. So are we, for the time being. For my help. Thank you. I I hope you can take us to Baxter Springs. Us? My patient and me. What's he doing over there? Well, he, he's worried about Lukoa. She's his wife. He does his worrying from a distance, doesn't he? He has to. This is the dividing line. The Confederates can't do their own fighting, so they preach rebellion to the Indians. Our army had to make it a hanging offense for an Indian to cross the river.
suppose we stop moving your things. Thank you. So you can't really call it a hospital, just one room in the entire house. But I wanted to keep things going until Dad gets home. Well, well that's me. When Johnny Rebel admits he's nicked. Dad's in the army. For a nurse, uh, a good Samaritan, you've worked up a solid hate for Johnny Reb, haven't you? Well, we've been at war almost four years. It's enough time to learn how to hate good and hard, isn't it? More than enough. Wouldn't you like a blanket around you? It's still pretty damp. Oh, no thanks. The air will dry me out. You, uh, sure I'm not taking you out of your way? I sort of wish you were. Then this would be a real gesture. It's nice of you anyway. It's almost a day's ride to Baxter Springs. Good. Staying long? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> it's a pretty little town. You'll like it. I'm sure I will. I've been warned about traveling salesmen. By whom? Other traveling salesmen. If a man sees a pretty girl, he ought to tell her so. Do you see many in your travels? Girls, I mean. Uh, most of the time, just Benji. He's good company, but he's not very pretty. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh, oh dear. Sorry. Maybe you'd like to go in the back and rest for a while. You say we've got a long trip ahead of us. Oh, no, I'm all right. I'm fine. We might hit another bump. We might hit that. I'm used to it. We'll bring your things in. Thank you. What about the hospital wagon? Oh, I'll send someone for it. I never thought I'd live to see the day. What? You and a Yankee girl. Terrible. A thing like that could start a war. Over there, Lucor. Just, uh, put it anywhere. Well, Jim, if you want to get the other things out of the wagon, I can help get this straightened around here. Fine. Where, where do you want them, ma'am? Hmm? I'll put these down. Where, where do you want them? Oh, uh, uh, just put it over on the window seat, please. It was really so nice of you to help us out. Oh, that's... Uh... It's very kind. My father. Oh. Well, it sure takes all kinds, don't it? I beg your pardon? It's a funny world. Your father there, proud of his uniform, proud. And other people, like Jim Faraday, never even wore one. You mean he never was in the Army? But he, he's young and well, he's certainly able-bodied. No, he's a fine specimen. Oh, it's for religious reasons. No, no, ma'am. He's anti-war on just straight physical grounds. He says, right, Jim says that he just don't like the idea of getting shot at. Maybe even killed. Is that true? It's the way I feel, Nora. I can manage now, thank you. You know, it's a funny coincidence, our meeting. Both of us in the same business. You with your nursing home, and us with Doc Sunderland's muscle builder. Yes. <laughs> Funny. Benji.
gather round, folks, and hear my song. It'll make you happy, it'll make you strong. If pain and misery is your lot, Doc Sunderland's remedies hit the spot. And if what you've got is chronic, there's nothing like his tonic. Cause it builds you up and it cures your ills. One bottle's worth a million pills. Come in closer, ladies and gentlemen. As a big, big favor to yourselves, come in real close. Before and after. If you please, Mr. Thompson. Yes, sir, Mr. Faraday. Tapioca, tapioca, tapioca. I ate till I couldn't see straight. Oh, working on the railroad, 20 cents a day. Johnny, pick a tune on your banjo. Listen to the wheels go clacking on their way. Tapioca, 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 they seem to say. and gentlemen, I'll tell you what we're going to do. There is no one in this fine crowd here today. I say there is no one in this great sovereign state. In fact, folks, there is no one in this entire universe of ours who can face himself in the looking glass on any given morning and say, I'm as chock full of health as the good Lord intended me to be. I say there's no one, but that condition is necessary, folks. A great writer, William Shakespeare himself, once wrote, why let pain your pleasure spoil for want of muscle-building oil? That's what the good Doc Sunderland is offering you folks here today. The only inside and outside tonic known to be beneficial to man. Now you'll have to step right up. It's 75 cents a bottle. You can have as many as you want. We won't be back until next year. That's right, the lady wants you. To do. Obey orders! And have you die a sudden hero, my men too? Would that have been better? Yes, killing him can cost us thousands of lives. Maybe change the course of the war. Our wagon's just outside. If you'd like to be taken down the street to the hospital. Thanks. In a minute. After the body's removed, I want this store locked up tight and kept under guard. I'll do the searching after I get back. Well, what are you looking for? Give me a lift, Jenkins. You didn't answer my question, Mr. Kelso. No, I didn't. Now, I don't have to take orders from you, you know. I'm sheriff here. And this isn't federal territory. Let's go, Jenkins, before the sheriff decides he'll take over the federal government. Hey, Doc. This stuff as good as you claim it is? Better. Ooh, muscle builder. As soon as the war's over, you ought to head south. The Rebs are gonna need a lot of muscle building when we get through with them. But you know as well as I do, the sheriff can stop us from searching the store. Not us. I'll do all the searching. All right, just you then. He can stop you. He can't stop a search warrant. Why antagonize him? Why not tell him what you're looking for? Sure, tell him. Tell everybody. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Six bits. Oh, you can spare one little bottle. Six bits. Where's your pitch? Ain't you a patriot? I've been killing Rebs for over three years for people like you. I said six bits. All right, all right. Oh. Jenkins. Give Mr. Kelso a hand. Yes, sir. Too bad. Too expensive. Look alive, Jenkins. Yes, sir.
soon as I saw the man was hurt, I suggested bringing you here. You know, throwing business your way. I'm not looking for business, Mr. Faraday. Bring in the other kettle. Please, Miss Curtis. Oh, thank you very much. So this will burn just a bit. You just hold this for a minute and press down. I saw your father's picture in the parlor. Where is he stationed? Well, at the minute, he, he's with General Sherman heading through Georgia. That's where I wanted to be, with Sherman or Sheridan, where the action is. Out here, we hardly even get news of the war. Travelers bring us more information than... How about you, mister? You hear any war news in your travels? I hardly ever listen. Mr. Faraday's a conscientious objector. Not conscientious, just objector. Lucky you weren't caught in the draft. Oh, I was, back home in Boston. Boston? Sure. Can't you tell? Oh, of course. If you were drafted, why aren't you in the Army? Well, I am in a way. I hired a substitute for $300. Brave fellow, they tell me. I may even turn out to be a real war hero. By proxy, of course. Wipe them all off the face of the earth. Business before pleasure. We can't afford trouble. <laughs> well, let's see how tough fancy clothes is. One night, fancy clothes. You and me to a finish. About time for those yellow breaks. belly. That's why he ain't in uniform. He's yellow. <laughs> I'm taking General Chet's my invitation. Get ready, stranger. Come on, Jingers, we're betting on you. I'd better stop it. No. Let's see if the conscientious objector turns the other cheek. Jenkins is the toughest barroom fighter in my outfit. He'll cut that Boston lily to bits. Don't bet on it, Lieutenant. Mister, you should have finished him. Be less to worry about when it comes dark. Nothing like that. My men aren't sneaks. You have my word for it, sir. There'll be no further trouble. Your men are a pack of headaches. Why don't you get them out of town before they get hurt? By you? Lieutenant, don't play soldier boy with me. I think I can get you another coat. Thanks, I have one. When you dress, I'll buy the drinks. Some other time, maybe. Miss Curtis? Yes, Mr. Kelso? What do you know about uh, James Faraday? Why, nothing. I... We met by accident a few days ago when my wagon broke down. From which direction was he coming? Well, it... It might have been east or northeast. Why? Just curious. For a man who spends three hundred dollars to keep from fighting, he...
General Sheridan scores smashing victory in Northern Virginia. <laughs> Bet the Rebs ain't running any faster than that soldier you worked over. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. James Faraday just sent a telegram. Let's have it. It's uh, just a regular business message, isn't it? Yeah, send it. And uh, send this one for me. Yes, sir. gentlemen we don't sell merchandise after sundown we're not buying we're looking a search warrant don't get foolish pop hey what is this we're a legitimate business you just can't now see here it'll cost you six bits for every bottle you bust and five cents for every empty that's what we had i'm warning you to be careful lieutenant let's see what's in here sergeant don't touch you Lieutenant came in like he was Christopher Columbus himself. Gonna discover America all over again. He called me Pop. <laughs> Yankees never had no manner. Easy. Oh, I had a break before a husband. He never made enough to buy the meat. Oh, don't have a brakeman for a husband Or this is all you'll ever get to eat Tapioca, tapioca All he ever could afford was tapioca Buy the pop bowl, buy the carload But it came to an end, I wait again Oh, take me on the railroad, take me far away Johnny, pick a tune on your banjo Listen to the wheels go clacking on their way Tapioca, tapioca, tapioca They seem to say I hope you'll forgive this intrusion, but being in the same business as yourself, show business... Run right along, mister. I'm already spoken for. Naturally, I wouldn't presume to think that an artist like you wouldn't be surrounded by admirers. No more. I got myself a study now. I'm deeply envious of her, ma'am, and I don't want to intrude, believe me. It was the coincidence of your song that brought me backstage. What coincidence? My partner and I have been using that song for months in our medicine show. And what am I supposed to do, cut it out or something? Not at all. By the way you sing it, you're more entitled to have the song than we are. <laughs> for a minute, I thought you wanted to make trouble. Quite the contrary. You really think I put it over? Mmm, big. Maybe I should do it regular. Didn't you ever sing it before? First time. It was a request number. Do you uh, recall who requested it? Of course. My steady. Sally, ask Mr. Faraday to come in. Won't you come in, Mr. Faraday? There's that drink we didn't have this afternoon. Sally, find yourself another home. Don't worry, honey. I won't be in the way. I said find yourself another home. Sure, sweetie. I don't mind. I'll be in with Laura. If you want me, just knock on the wall. Sally. Yes? Close the door. Okay. 
I'm the man you're looking for to take you through the Union lines. Here's to a no trouble trip. You're talking way over my head, mister. Faraday, let's drop the games and save time. I work for your contact man, Anderson Smith. Running horses through Indian territory for you Rebs. You need any more proof? I didn't say a word. I like listening. The longer it takes you to buy me, the easier it's going to be for Braden and that Pinkerton man to mess things up. Kelso checked on that telegram you sent. Now he's checking on you personally. I still like listening. Well, you better listen quick. Smith told me all about you. Faraday. Faraday's the name of someone from Boston that went to college with you. Simmons. That's your real name, Captain James Simmons, Georgia Volunteers. Your brother Pete got himself killed at Bull Run. Your pitchman's whole handle is Benjamin Guterman, sergeant in your outfit. More? <laughs> no. Good enough to hang Benji and me three times over. Here's to that no trouble trip through the Union lines. What part of home are you from? The only thing you and me got in common is we both bleed if we're cut. This is a business and I'm in it for money. How much? 2,000 gold. That's the way Smith promised it, cash on the line. Benji. Give him 300 in gold. 2,000's a price. 300 now, another 1,000 when we're inside the Confederate lines. You can take that or nothing. You can't get through Indian territory without me. Maybe not, but we can sure make a big try. <laughs> it's a deal. Easy come, easy go, with our money. He hasn't won a hand. The faster he goes broke, the quicker he leaves town. The way he's running second best, that won't be long. This is a pair. Look at him. He's got the manners of a pig. Here comes Christopher Columbus. And the sheriff. Gentlemen, what you gonna sing, sheriff? Give us a song and dance. Gentlemen, please. please. Sing nice and loud. Oh, okay, Wait a minute. I have an important announcement to make. Now, we've been asked to cooperate with the Army. And from now on, any vehicle leaving Baxter Springs will be searched by my deputies and federal troops. What for? What you looking for? Well, when we find it, then you'll find out. That fixes it. We've got to move fast. Think you can handle things at the Curtis house? Leave it to me. I'll keep an eye on Manning. Miss, would you... Uh, do you have something, anything at all, for stomach poisoning? It's very late. Anything at all, please. Oh, please. Come in. Oh. I didn't mean to turn you away. You're very kind. Well, it's just that I have to leave town very early in the morning with my patients. Oh, I understand. Never mind. I'll oh, now, nonsense. You come right in. Mm. Now, you sit right down here. Oh, hi. That's it. Now, I'll get something from the hospital room. We'll pop out your stomach and have you feeling better in no time. No! Oh, that never... It never helps a case like mine. Well, no, there's no reason to be alarmed. Really, it's practically painless. Oh, I don't mind the pain, really. But a, a, a doctor in Boston and one in New York, they tried the same thing. They didn't get any place with me. Exactly. Identically the same thing. 
They say that I have a special type stomach. Oh, really? It's the way I'm formed inside or something. Well, do you get these attacks often? Oh, three, maybe four times a year. Only thing that ever helps me is Kimmel tea. Kimmel tea? Yeah, it's an old German special... But of course, it's an old remedy for stomach ache. Yeah. I have some water on the stove. Now, you sit quietly and I'll brew some right away. Yeah. In the saloon. The water will be boiled in just a moment. You look a bit better. Being inside in a warm house always helps me. Does Mr. Faraday know you're sick? When Jim gambles big, he doesn't like to be bothered. Fine friend. Jim's not so bad, he only gambles to forget his troubles. What kind of troubles? Oh, I don't know. One thing and another. I, I'm not supposed to talk about it. Oh, that's it. Genuine Kimmel tea. My grandmother, may she rest in peace, used to say good Kimmel tea will cure anything. Here, I can show you exactly how she used to make it. Was he in trouble with the police back east? Oh, no, except when it comes to gambling and women. Jim's pretty much law-abiding. Now... If you'll bring some cups, miss, please. Why aren't you supposed to talk about it? About what? Mr. Faraday's troubles. Well, I gave my sacred word to him and his... I gave my word. One teaspoonful for flavoring. My grandmother, may she rest in peace, used to say one teaspoon, no more, no less. It must be something pretty shameful if he had to be sworn to secrecy by him and his... Who did you say it was? I didn't, miss. That's one of the things I promised never to talk about. You understand my position, don't you? Naturally. feel that Kimmel taking hold. Would you mind if I boil up another batch? Sometimes it takes a couple of pots for me to come back to myself. another 300. We have a contract, Manning. It rides that way. A thousand more when we're through. I'm ready to leave when you are. Pretty soon now. I'll let you know. I know who that other person is. A girl. I, I promised. Benjamin, who took care of you when you were sick? Mr. Faraday or me? You did. 
Either we are friends, or we are not friends. We are friends. Then tell me. It won't go outside of this room. You have my word. Your sacred word? My sacred word. You were right. A girl. Two. Was it in Boston? And New York. Where else? Chicago. And? And Milwaukee. That's why Jim wants to leave Baxter Springs. Why? He says there aren't enough girls here. Give me the... Don't miss. Give me the gun. You see. <laughs> no. No. Just target practice. Oh, well. Search too close. They're used to seeing this wagon come and go. Maybe we'll get by without a real close inspection. What if we don't? We shoot our way through. But if it's passed, you and Manning will pick it up this side of the river at the ford. I'll meet you there with our wagon in 24 hours at daybreak. Well, I find Manning. The livery stable. I wish we didn't have to do business with him. Lucky we made the contact. He can run horses through the lines. He ought to be able to get us through. Here, you better hold on to the bank rope. No sense trusting a bad poker player this close to cash money. Watch him, Benji. With Manning, you shoot first and discuss the reasons later. you up and accuse your ills one bottle's worth a million pills <laughs> how about a pick you up how oh when, when, when did you get here last night you ready for breakfast coffee bread and honey just what you ordered i ordered oh yes is 
B Benji downstairs? Downstairs? Why, no. He left last night when you told him to go, honey. I told him to go? Well, there was no sense in both of us taking care of you. What? Cream? Sugar? One or two? Two. Oh, don't you feel well? I, I'll be all right. Will you please go? Isn't there something I can do for you? A wet towel or something? You'll call me if you change your mind. Oh, that was the nightgown you wanted to wear, wasn't it? Good trip, Nora. And what do you want? It'll only take a minute, Nora. We got orders to search everything going out of town. If you do much better stopping some of the riffraff from coming into town. And I won't have you messing up my things. Now, they'll be real careful. Now you woke the baby. I'm sorry, Nora. No, oh, never mind, boys. Miss Curtis can go on. Thank you. Get him. Shut up. Come on, Bo. Keep your hands off her. Yes, sir, Colonel, sir. The trouble with me is I'm no southern gentleman. That's dead certain. We'll pull up over there by the river. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Nobody's going to hurt you, Miss. I'm sorry you got mixed up in this. Nothing we could do. Jim will be here at daybreak, and we'll transfer these boxes into our wagon, and then you can be on your way. What's in those boxes? Well, it's a... kind of a muscle building. You are the man Kelso was after. You are thieving spies, you and Jim Faraday. In our country, ma'am, the Confederate States of America, they call us patriots. Miss? Now, we'll need more cover than this. They're down by the river. Yes, sir, Colonel, sir. Ah. Folks spend the night in the wagon. You'll be more comfortable here. I'll start supper right after I hitch the team. Now look, miss, I want you to stop worrying. There's no need for it, you hear? 
You'll be just as safe here as you are in your own home. You got my word. Why not your sacred word? Yes, ma'am. What are those horses? We're not stopping. We're meeting Jim Faraday here tomorrow morning. I got other plans. If you want that other thousand, you're gonna have to wait for him. Jim's got the money belt. <laughs> You wait for him, Colonel. Sir. Your eyes on a trail. Now look, Doctor, the only reason you're still alive is that squaw comes from Yellow Hawk's village. The squaw and the kid are your life insurance. Tell her I do my business with Yellow Hawk. She got nothing to worry about. The South must be real proud of you. The trail's that way. Clean as Lewis. Right. You boys mind straightening things out the way you found them? They'll tend to it. You coming back our way, Mr. Faraday? Might. We've got a good business town here. As good as they come. And growing all the time. Say, so which way are you heading? Gonna meet my partner up in Lawrence. Oh. Wait till you see the difference. Like night and day. Lawrence is a dead town compared to ours. All finished. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. We'll be with Kelso if you need us. Yeah. Is Mr. Kelso in there? I got an important message for him. I'll give it to him. Sorry, it's, uh, it's confidential. Come in. Hey, you. Something else came in, too. Big news. Richmond and Petersburg were evacuated. General Lee's army's in full retreat. Well, say, that's great news. Why do you know? Complete investigation shows James Faraday of Boston was a major in Union Army. He was killed in action at Yorktown more than two years ago. Suggest your man in Baxter Springs assumed this identity for purposes of his own. Let's pick up Jim Faraday. Wait a minute. Faraday left town. Well, how was I to know you wanted him? You never said anything. You never once took me into your confidence. Not once. When'd he go? No, four... No, five hours ago. You searched his wagon? Every inch of it. He said Lawrence was his next stop. We can catch him in a few hours. He isn't going to Lawrence. Lieutenant, you have anybody can track a wagon? I can, but not at night. We'll wait. I want 12 men to go with us at daybreak. I'll have them.
Are they much besides bottles? Better have one of your men take the wagon back to Baxter Springs. Ross. Time it'll be your face. Another wagon stopped by here first. And a single horse, probably Faraday's, took out after the wagon. How long ago? Can you tell? No, but I can follow it. Gatling gun. You can tell your warriors they'll see it fire 250 bullets a minute, fast as rain from the sky. Belinka, Ate, ya Bialto, Patahayitso, Nagalim, Pacalgo. I have told my men. Now let the gun speak. Let it say that you have earned the price. Tell them to hang on to their war bonnets. Watch those! bullets. It fits this gun. This gun will give you the strength of ten tribes. They'll all be afraid of Yellow Hawk. Unless they too get such guns. Can't. Four of these guns in existence and this is the only one in the West. Atiet Pialto. There you go. Gochi. Eheihai. We march against Fort Smith. Good hunting. Six more bag of gold. Four thousand of your gold dollar. If you march with us. Uh, it's not my war, not for just another four thousand. <laughs> Inside Fort Smith are many times four thousand. It is yours if you join us and shoot this gun. How do you know it's inside Fort Smith? My scouts have seen it. With the fort's ammunition and this gun, many tribes will join Yellow Hawk. Uh, even with a gun, you're gonna need more men than this. We have friends in other villages. The Ogala. The Minikonju, the Osage, they will come when we call. If I join you, it's for one attack only. I agree. And I want an escort out of the territory when it's over. I agree. <laughs> it's a deal. When do we march? Sunrise. Smoke signal over the ridge, sir.
We're going to attack Fort Smith. Come on, come on, just a minute. the shortest way to Fort Smith. We're not going there. I'm dropping you off near Baxter Springs and I'm heading for home. If I can make it to the Union lines. But we've got to warn them. There's still time. I'm not concerned about Fort Smith. Are well, you concerned about the gun? And Brett Manning, aren't you? I'll catch up with Manning somewhere, sometime. That's the one thing I'm sure of. You won't consider a truce talk. Not when you can let those men at the fort die. Not much I can do about it. You can warn them. Where I come from, saving Yankees is considered very noble. Well, can't you think of them just as people? I could, I suppose. But it wouldn't be easy. The same kind of people burned my home in Atlanta and killed my brother. And do you know what would happen to me at Fort Smith if I made that noble gesture you keep harping on? They'd shoot me for a spy. I guess you're right. In a war, you, you have to take sides. And four years of war are more than enough to learn how to hate good and hard. You said that, remember? There aren't so many differences between us, really. And someday when we know each other a little better. Someday. Maybe. Time to turn in. <laughs> That's just like you, Yankees. You want all the territory for yourselves. Mason Dixon lion. And see that you don't cross it. Pick it up. The best kind of rebels are dead ones. Mr. Kelso and I have the same philosophy, but different viewpoints. Where's the Gatling gun? He just searched me, didn't he? Yellowhawk has the gun. Manning sold it to him. They're advancing against Fort Smith. We ride through, we might make it. Clone, Thomas, alert the garrison at Lawrence. The fort's gonna need all the help it can get. You ought to send Miss Curtis back with them, so she won't see the bloodshed. On a small scale, it's liable to look like Atlanta when all you brave Yankee soldiers burnt us out. You probably don't care, Faraday, but Fort Smith isn't all Yankee soldiers. Their wives and children are with them.
they're using a rapid-fire gun of some kind. I've heard rumors of a gun that operates like a machine. It's that we're in for something. So far, we haven't been able to locate the emplacement. I think our only chance is to send out a patrol, sir. Send 12 men through the rear gates. Yes, sir. Make observations in the tower. Report all activities to me. Yes, sir. Just the other side of that rise. They're using the Gatling gun. Mr. Kelsey, give me Mr. Faraday's carbine. Keep your men out of sight. Gun. It's our only chance. I'm ready whenever you are. We use knives and we're able to get close enough to Manning. To stop him and to stop the captain. He's probably the only one that knows how to operate it. He may not be the only one. I was wondering, maybe your leg will slow you down. Any of the men will be glad to take you. Thanks, but this is my job. We'll crawl up quietly on opposite flanks. The gun is pretty well protected by rocks. Deploy your men behind that ridge. Absolutely no noise. And if they ever see you, we'll never get a second chance to reach that gun. I understand, sir. Take cover. Signals. Two new tribes. Both sages and many cars you join Yellow Hawk. Maybe a thousand, maybe more. Colonel Stagg, signals from Major Dawson. He's waiting the other side of Ridge Hill. Signal him to await orders. That's all. Yes, sir.
No, you can't shoot. No noise. Those were the orders. to attack. I can deliver it to the arsenal in Indianapolis now. Where are you from, Mr. James Simmons, Georgia Volunteers. That train robbery was a nice job. Good timing. Sergeant, let's prepare to move this gun inside the fort. Mr. Kelso, I hope you're going to take into consideration what Jim did to... I, uh, I never like being judge or jury, Miss Curtis. The news came through in Baxter Springs a few days ago. Richmond and Petersburg have fallen. Lee's army is in full retreat. 
It's a matter of only a week now, maybe less. What happens to you will be up to the military court. If you're around when they meet, Do you have any plans? I mean, do you well, think... I'll go home, fix up the old place, travel maybe. West, I guess. Anywhere near Baxter Springs? My first stop. There's that different point of view again. I plan to make it your last stop. Well, next to last. You'll like Atlanta. <laughs>